The Fago crochet stitch is honestly a lot of fun. It's worked in a multiple stitch count requirement of a multiple of two plus one. I would say the level of this pattern would be more of an advanced beginner crocheter because we are taking three basic stitches and joining them at the top. So uh, yeah, I would say you need a little more experience than an absolute beginner crocheter, but it's still a very simple pattern. And we're gonna go ahead and dive into that right now and show you what I mean. So this pattern, we're gonna start with a tail long enough for us to weave in our end at the end of the project. I am again gonna just make a small swatch so that way I can get through the instructions faster for you. Again, this pattern is worked in a multiple of two plus one. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, multiple of two, and then plus one. Great. All right, moving on to row one. For row one, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V stitches, one, two, single crochet, and then just make one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way across. All right, when we get to the end of row one, to move on to row two, we're going to chain two. One, two, turn our work. All right, so for row two, we're gonna start with the Fago stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our crochet hook into that first stitch space, yarn over, pull through. I have three loops on my crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through only two loops, and then pause. Then we're gonna yarn over again, insert our crochet hook into the next stitch space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through only two loops on our crochet hook, and then pause. We have three loops on our crochet hook right now. Let's do that one more time. Yarn over, insert our crochet hook into the next stitch space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through only two loops on our crochet hook. Now we have four loops on our crochet hook, one loop coming from stitch number one, one loop coming from stitch number two, and one loop coming from stitch number three. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all four loops on our crochet hook, and that is the Fago stitch. And then we're gonna chain two loosely. What that means is that we're gonna give ourselves a little bit of a give here on our loop that's on our crochet hook. Chain one, chain two. We're doing this to get ourselves over to the next Fago stitch. If we make really tight chains, every stitch is gonna start to slant towards those tight chains and it's all gonna slant and we don't want that. All right. For the next stitch, pay close attention because somebody's going to mess up right here and I wanna make sure that you've got this. So we're gonna make that Fago stitch. We're gonna yarn over, insert your crochet hook into the same stitch that your last stitch was in. So there's already one stitch in this stitch space. Insert a crochet hook into that same stitch space. Yarn over, pull through. Then yarn over and pull through only two loops on our crochet hook. Yarn over, insert our crochet hook into the next stitch space. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through only two loops. Yarn over, insert our crochet hook into the next stitch space. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through only two loops on our crochet hook. We now have four loops on our crochet hook. That should be your indicator right there to keep going until you have four loops on your crochet hook and then yarn over and pull through all four loops on your crochet hook and then chain two loosely. And repeat. You can yarn over. The very first stitch of your Fago stitch will be in the same stitch that already has a stitch in it.
two, three. I got four loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. One, two. One, two, three, yarn over, pull through. At the very end of row two, we're still going to chain two, one, two, but end with one half double crochet stitch in that very last stitch space. Half double crochet. There we go. Great. Now let's move on to row three. For row three, we will chain one. We will turn our work. And now for row three, we're basically going to be making one single crochet stitch in every chain, every chain across and the very first stitch and the very last stitch. We do not put any stitches at the top of the Fagot stitches. And I'm going to walk you through. I just wanted to speed through that instruction right now if you wanted to like jump ahead. All right, so top of the very first half double crochet stitch, we will make a single crochet stitch. The next stitches are two chains. So the pattern doesn't specify if they want you to single crochet over the chain or single crochet into the chain. So I'm gonna let that be up to you, personal preference. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and crochet over the chain. All right, so there's two single crochets. So there's two chains right here. So I'm going to single crochet one, single crochet two. Hop over the Fagot stitch, single crochet one, single crochet two. Hop over the Fagot stitch, single crochet one, single crochet two. Great. Repeat this all the way across for row three. Skipping over that Fagot stitch and making one single crochet stitch over each chain. When you get to the very end of row three, skip over that Fagot stitch and make a single crochet at that second chain or the top chain to close off row three. That's very important so that way we can make sure that the sides of our work are staying straight. All right, so that's all we do for the entire pattern is just repeat row two and row three, row two and row three. I highly recommend that you end on a row three repeat though. That way you can have that, this really nice top of whatever it is that you're making. It's very straight, very clean. Very easy to add a border on if you want to. All right, so let's go ahead and if you would like to grab the crochet stitch card from my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, under resources. It's free. It's just nice to have on hand. So I really encourage you to make a small little swatch yourself. Practice it because I believe that when you do that, you're going to want to make something with this stitch, whether it be a scarf, a hat, a beanie. Uh, gosh, it could even be a shawl or a blanket, really anything you want to make with this stitch. Again, the name of the stitch is the Fago stitch or the Fagoting stitch. The multiple stitch count requirement for the stitch is a multiple of two plus one. Important to know if you want to join different stitches together for a project. Uh, the yarn that I used was a size four weight worsted medium Aran 1012 ply or eight WPI sized yarn, which is important because if you make your sample in a size three lightweight DK or a size five bulky chunky yarn, you want to make sure that you're representing exactly what materials you used with to get to achieve that look. All right, I am using Loops and Threads Impeccable yarn in the color linen just in case I want to reference that in the future. The crochet hook that I am using is the H8 five millimeter crochet hook. Again, this can be whatever you are using. Just make sure you place it that way when you reference back to this swatch, you'll know in order for me to achieve this look, this is what I used. 
and the pattern. So the pattern for the Fagoche stitch will look like this. I'll put it on the screen. You can pause the video and write that into the pattern section. That way you have something to reference in the future. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. I hope, I really, really hope that you do it too. Again, some really fun projects that you could make with this is a scarf, a shawl, a blanket, a beanie, a really, even a sweater would be really beautiful with this. It's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me in making this crochet stitch. If you had a lot of fun, check out my other crochet stitch videos and keep it going. I'll see you at the next one, guys. Bye.